Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Help. I'm Sharmila and in this session we'll discuss about the basic installation process of APM and the other environment setup in Windows machine. Now the installation for APM is quite a long process. So here are a list of tools or softwares that have to be installed in your machine before you try to automate any application on your mobile device. So let's understand and start uh, installing one by one. So the first one is JDK Java Development Kit. I think most of you should be having Java installed in your mission uh, in case you have tried automation on a web browser using Selenium or else have it installed. I'll just show you how. Just go to Google and uh, type in JDK download. Here you will be directed to the official website. Go to, uh, go to that site and uh, select JDK download and from here you will have list of EXEs for each machine. So for Windows machine select that particular EXE file and start downloading. Once the downloading is complete for this EXE file next you need to install this in your machine. So while installing uh, specify a, um, installation path for that. So in my case I have my Java or JDK installed in C program files. I have a folder called Java and I have my JDK installed here. So this is how the JDK folder structure looks like. Once your installation is done next you need to set the environment variable for Java. Now the reason for having or setting the environment variable for Java is that your operating system will not be able to recognize where you have installed your Java when you're trying to run a Java application outside your bin folder. So in order to set a runtime environment for Java uh, just go to properties right click advanced system settings environment variable select new and here add the variable for Java. So once you set the variable like this operating system will be able to understand where your Java is installed and uh, run any Java application from any location in your system. And here you should specify the location of where your Java is placed. So mine is placed in bin folder and here again I have my Java and compiler placed. So every folder structure is the same. So just give until bin and click on OK. OK now you can see that the Java variable got added to the list. Uh, and now my system should be able to recognize Java. So in order to confirm that go to command prompt type in Java hyphen version and now it should return me the version that I have installed. Yeah, so it says 1.8.0 is the version that I have installed and that's the version I have installed just cross verify. Okay, so now my system is able to recognize the Java variable from the environment path. So the, the next tool is uh, Android SDK. So SDK is software development kit. So this tool helps you to create an emulator. So I'll tell you why we need an emulator. So whenever we try to automate an application on a mobile device either you would like to do it directly on a mobile device or you would like to use a virtual device. You don't have a mobile. You just want to create a virtual device like your mobile and you want your automation to perform on that virtual device. So this virtual device is what we call as an emulator. OK, so in order to create emulators of different configurations of different devices with different OS versions, certain packages has to be installed in your machine and only then an emulator can be created. So those packages are available in this SDK Android SDK. So once you have this tool in your machine, it gives you options with which uh, you can install packages and finally create an emulator. So now let's see how that can be done. Again go to Google and type Android SDK. Will be di uh, directed to the official website from there select Android just search for Android. SDK file and download the zip folder. So I would always recommend to have a common uh, folder created in your system for whatever installation you are doing for uh, mobile automation. So my in my system I have a folder created called mobile automation and here is where I put all the tools and softwares required or related to mobile automation and I have my Android SDK downloaded as a zip folder here and I have extracted this over here and you can see the folder structure. So this is how Android SDK looks like after it is extracted. So once this is done open the SDK manager that is the software development kit manager and this will have packages that has to be installed after which you can create an emulator. So let's install the packages now. 
now here you can see that you have tools so select the first three tools sdk platform tools and build tools so these three are mandatory packages that has to be installed and then you have certain other api versions of android so i would always suggest to go for the latest versions latest five versions or four versions and get it installed in your machine uh, but if you want to have or check your automation compatibility in other versions of android yes you can have them installed as well so whatever versions of android you want to have or want to get it installed just select those and click on install packages and once you click on install packages the installation process will take some time maybe few hours depending upon how your internet speed is meanwhile you can set the environment variable for android sdk also so here you go to my computer right click properties select advanced system settings select environment variables and create a variable here just specify a name saying android home and in the value specify where your sdk manager is placed so my sdk manager is placed in this location so i'll just put it over there and click on ok and now you can see that the variable got added to the list so in order to confirm that my system is able to recognize the sdk just go to command prompt type in android here and it should open the sdk manager you can see that the sdk manager got opened and my system is able to recognize the environment path so once you have installed all the packages then you will have your avd manager available in the same folder that is your android virtual device so this is where you are going to create an emulator this helps you to create an emulator let's see how how that can be done now in avd you have two tabs the android virtual devices so this tab has the list of virtual devices you have created using the configurations given and uh, device definitions uh, holds the list of uh, various devices with which you can create an emulator so in case if you want to create an emulator just go to create a uh, given name maybe mm, just give any name for now just give mobile or mobile and select a device name select an os version api version and then select the skin that is the appearance of how you would like to have it on your screen and then click on okay so once you have created a device that would be listed under this tab so uh, i will show you how the emulator will look like just select your device and click on start your launching process will happen now this is how an emulator will look like and this is the area where the mobile desktop is loaded so this loading time mostly takes minimum of 15 minutes to launch it's a bit slow you should wait for some time so i just wanted to show how an emulator would look like for each device so for whatever configuration of device you have created you will have the emulator appearing like this okay so this is available from your avd manager okay so now let's go go and look uh, in the next tool so that's add plugin so this is a plugin that has to be uh, installed in eclipse so that you can club your android sdk and your avd in eclipse now basically you would be creating a project in eclipse and here you will write your automation code and uh, you will also run your automation from here so when you want your mobile automation uh, to invoke an application on your emulator you should have the avd manager clubbed in with the eclipse so in order to have avd manager integrated with eclipse edit plugin uh, does the job just go to help click install new software uh, select add just give a name saying edit plugin uh, pass this url and your plugin gets installed so once the installation is over you will need to re restart eclipse and once that is done uh, you should set the uh, sdk path in eclipse also so jo uh, suggest go to windows preferences select android and here in sdk location give the location where your sdk is placed so this is how you integrate your sdk so once your sdk is integrated your avd manager also gets integrated automatically in order to verify that go to windows and see whether your android sdk manager and the avd android virtual device manager gets listed in the uh, options list so this is how you integrate avd and sdk using add plugin 
and then you are free to run automation on this emulator so whatever emulator you have created you, you are free to use those emulators when you are when you are trying to run any code from eclipse that is the reason you need to have adt plugin installed in eclipse okay so next comes apm that is the main automation tool that you have to get it installed in your system so for this again go to google and type in apm go to the official website and download apm once the download is complete uh, it will ask for installation so start installing apm in your machine and in my case i have my apm installed in c program files and here is where i have my apm installed the folder structure looks like this okay so once the installation is complete open the apm application and here click on the android settings icon button here select the platform name as android if you are uh, if you want your automation to run on android and um, select the automation name as apm if it is an android of versions greater than 4.3 plus if it is less than that select sell android and select the platform version that is the android version of your mobile device on which you are going to automate on okay so these settings you, you should you should be having and once that is done click on this play button to launch the apm server you should always be having in mind that you should have this apm launched in the first place and only then you can run any mobile device or any application on your mobile device without having apm launch you can't run an application on your mobile device so always make sure to have this up so now you can see that the apm server is launched it said it says welcome to apm version 1.4.16 and here uh the platform name that you entered the platform version and the automation name that you gave in the settings are reflected and one more thing to note is that just go to the settings icon and note down the server address and port number because using these two you will be establishing the connection with apm from your automation code so you should have these noted down okay so that's about the apm automation tool next comes node.js this node.js again is already available along with apm so we know that apm is an http server return in node.js programming language uh, this is already available in apm but i would always suggest to have it installed separately because sometimes it is causing certain issues when we are trying to execute it so here you can see that i have my apm folder and i have node.js already present but always take it separately also as a backup option so just go to google and uh, type in node.js download just go to the official website and download the zip file so, uh, depending upon your windows version levels and then in my case i have my node.js installed in in mobile automation folder so here i have my zip file and the extracted version you can find it over here so this is how the folder structure of node.js looks like okay so that's much about the first five tools the next tutorial we, we'll see about the rest installation part Thank you.